Eagles getting set for action. And happy holidays and a pleasant good afternoon. Jay Randolph to call the play and alongside a real pleasure to have Bob Greasy with us to analyze the action today. Bob, the importance of this game can be seen as we take a look at the standings. Down the road, the Super Bowl tournament, and you'll see that the Bengals are in excellent position. They're five and two. A victory today clinches the playoffs. A couple of wins would probably give them some good home field advantage. It certainly would. They're in a race for the home field advantage throughout the playoffs, but they have to win their, their next two ball games. Seattle, of course, has got to win. Seattle had a big game last week and lost to the Patriots. Uh, they were both three and three. If they win this ball game and next week, they'll be five and four and almost assured of a spot in the playoffs. The Seattle Seahawks were shut out at home last Sunday in the Kingdom. New England beat them 16 to nothing. Jim Zorn did not have a good day on that occasion. He completed but 15 passes, no touchdown passes, was intercepted on four occasions. And Zorn is going to have to have a good day today here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Bob, the big question in the minds of many of the people here, how about the Bengals after that very tough loss coming back from Monday night? 50 points scored against them. They scored over 30, but I'm wondering, do you think they'll run the ball a little more today? Well, I think they will. Uh, they've got Pete Johnson, uh, and he's going up against the Seattle defense. They are last in the league against the rush. So Pete Johnson will be a big factor in the ball game today. Seattle may try and get the Bengals to pass the ball more because they are so tough against the pass. But let's see, take a look at the ball game and see what happens. All right, we're about set to go. There's Mike McCormick, the interim head coach of the Seahawks. He's done an excellent job. Cincinnati will kick off, and it will be Jim Breach, Boris Gregg, the head man of the Bengals, had his team in the Super Bowl a year ago. Paul Johns, 85, and Eric Lane, 37, are set to receive. This crowd is set and ready, and Breach comes to the football. Hope you'll enjoy it wherever you are. That's Eric Lane. against a team of the caliber of the Cincinnati Bengals. This is not the way to start the ball game off. It could have been a big break against them, but fortunately they got the ball. Lane was in under the pile. Don't know whether he actually got it or not. First down. A ball at the 10-yard line. That's Largent going in motion. The give going to Sherman Smith. And Smith, the all rusher for the Seahawks. A penalty marker went down. Ken Riley and Ross Browner, 13 and 79, made the tackle. And we have a penalty right off the bat. Our referee is Bob Frederick. The discussion continuing. And apparently the indication is it will go against the Seahawks. Personal foul. Bob Frederick today being helped by Jerry Berkman, Bill Swanson, John Keck, Bob Beeks, Gary Lane, and Don Hakes. And let's listen to Bob Frederick as he gives us the call here. Personal foul, number 33 in the offense. Call goes against Dan Dornick, the five-year veteran. Isolated on Ross Browner there. Number, the number one draft choice. They have several number one draft choices along the line of the defense for the Cincinnati Bengals. Making a big play right there, the first one in the ball game. And off going to Dornick. And Dornick is upended as he got across the 10-yard line. We'll set this offense for you. Reggie Williams making the tackle there. Zorn, Smith, and Dornick in the Seahawks backfield. Johns, Largent, and Tice are the receivers. 
John Yarno at center with Bailey and Pratt at the guards and Essek and August at the tackles. Going to be second down, about nine. The ball at the 11-yard line. Opening moments of play. Temperature in the 50s. Sherman Smith getting outside to the 15-yard line. Ray Griffin, number 44, playing in place of Lewis Breeden at left corner, made the play. Glenn Cameron also there. The defensive line has Edwards and Browner with Whitley. Harris LeClaire, Cameron and Williams are the linebackers for Cincinnati. Ray Griffin, as we indicated, playing for the injured Lewis Breeden with Riley Hicks and Kemp in the secondary with him. Third down and four at the 16-yard line. Of secondary of the Bengals is known for, and that is hitting when you have your weak safety and your strong safety, the top two of the three guys making the tackle, you know you've got an aggressive secondary. Essing pulls across, the hole was due inside, there wasn't anything there. Dorning bounces outside, slips a little bit, and that always helps make the defensive back look good, but he got stung. And you can see the field is wet. They got a great deal of the water off of it, but it rained all day here yesterday. The punt by Jeff West. Mike Fuller is downfield. Fair catch at the 36-yard line. So it will be Cincinnati who will put it in play. There's Kemp, who just made that fine stop a moment ago. A 44-yard punt. And we'll see the Bengals offense for the first time this afternoon. Ken Anderson out of Augustana College in Illinois. He's the quarterback with Alexander and Johnson. Curtis, Collinsworth, and Ross, three outstanding receivers. Blair Bush at center with Lapham and Montoya, Anthony Munoz, and Mike Wilson. First down from the 36-yard line. And off going to Alexander across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Robert Hardy, number 75, made the play. This defensive unit done an excellent job for Seattle. Green and Hardy, Tuiasa Sopo and Bryant. Tuiasa Sopo bothered by some knee problems playing in his 55th consecutive game, though. He hangs tough. Joel's Jackson, and Butler are the linebackers. Simpson Brown, the talented Kenny Easley, and John Harris in the secondary. Pick up a four a moment ago. Second and six from the 41. Alexander again across the 45, up to the 47-yard line. Alexander, an All-American from LSU, stopped by Tuiasa Sopo and Robert Hardy. And one of the Seahawks shaken up. Number 74, Manu Tuiasa Sopo. As we mentioned, he has been bothered by knee problems. He has never missed a game, but he's going to have to go off. Now, they activated Mike White. Joe Nash played a great deal last week, the rookie from Boston College. And it is going to be Mike White, number 70, who's a former Cincinnati Bengal, in his second year at Seattle, activated just this week, who will take over for Tuiasa Sopo at right tackle. It is third down and one. Rushing average, 484 yards. Kenny Easley, number 45, coming up to make the play. We mentioned Mike White out of Albany State of Georgia in the lineup replacing Tuiasa Sopo. Anthony Munoz blocking down does a pretty good job on Mike White on the first play of White uh, in the ball game. It's a tough break, though, Jay, for uh, Mun uh, for uh, Manu Tuiasa Sopo. He had a bad knee coming into the ball game, uh, missed most of the game last week. Wanted to get in there and play, and the second play uh, he was hurt and had to go out. White is out now, and Joe Nash, the rookie 72, is in there. Anderson wants to go to the air, pumps, dropped the ball, fell on it, and let's see, is it an incomplete pass, or do they going to rule it a fumble? He pumped the ball, slipped away from him. Incomplete pass. Incomplete.
complete pass is the ruling. That happens uh, occasionally, Jay, when you have a wet field, which this is, and the uh, ball just slips. He, he looked downfield and changed his mind in the mid-stroke, but the ball slipped out of his hand. It was definitely an incomplete pass. Bob, you played on this field. Right now, Anderson's drop area is at the second base sliding area where they have some seams, and it's a tough spot. When he walks up to the line of scrimmage, he is looking where he's going to drop back so he knows what he's getting into. He throws, and it is complete. Down to the 43 yard line to Alexander. Alexander coming out to the backfield position, going left. Dave Brown had the coverage, the right cornerback. For Alexander, his ninth catch of the season. This is a high percentage pass. It's a little uh, option to the halfback coming out. He just turns in between the linebackers and has met. He was looking the other way and didn't know the man was coming from behind, but was hit very good by Dave Brown. Third down and a long three the 44-yard line of Seattle. No score. First quarter. Anderson and incomplete. The pass intended for the tight end, Ross, was a little high. Ross was isolated out there with the linebacker, number 58, Bruce Scholl. Actually, he had, uh, he had his uh, halfback open inside the tight end, but you work on these things in practice, and so many times the tight end is open, the tight end is open. You come in the ball game and you look for that receiver, and he's not. It's the other man who was always covered in practice. So you can't go up to the line of scrimmage with any preconceived notion of who you're going to throw it to. You have to read the coverage and react. John Harris and Kenny Easley set to receive the punt from Pat McAnally. McAnally averaged over 45 yards a kick last year. He's down quite a bit this year. Fair catch easily at the nine-yard line. We have nine minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Seattle Seahawks, the Cincinnati Bengals are scoreless. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda, who invites you to experience the low-priced Mazda B2000 Sundowner. By your Bell Phone Center. It's ingenious. It's genuine Bell. It's at your Bell Phone Center. And by Intellivision. Endless entertainment from Mattel Electronics. Riverfront Stadium. Cincinnati Bengals, Seattle Seahawks. 35-yard punt a moment ago. Seattle, second offensive try this afternoon from their own nine-yard line. Margin in motion to the near sideline. Whipped out it goes to Dornick. Dornick up the sideline, bumped out of bounds as he got across the 15-yard line. Rick Rosano, the third-year man from Virginia Tech, made the play on the far sideline against Dornick. Dornick catching his 16th pass of the season. Catches a lot of pass coming out of the backfield, Jay. This was a good play. It was a safe play. You're backed up near your own end zone. Gives it an opportunity, a little quick screen. Gives an opportunity to gain some big yards. Low percentage interception type of pass. Pickup of eight, second down and two from the 17-yard line. Seattle ranks 13th fifth in passing in the AFC. Zorn at the controls. Margin again in motion. And off going to Sherman Smith. Smith is short of the first down. It's going to be close enough that they may measure it, though. Now, putting the ball close to the 20-yard line, he may have the first down. He does. Bo Harris, number 53, and Glenn Cameron, number 50, on the stop. has an early lead against New England. That game going on up the river at Three Rivers. Anderson with a 21-yard field goal. Out it comes to Dornick. Dornick is out of bounds. The same play they ran a moment ago. That pass out into the flat. Bo Harris, 53, the linebacker, making the play. Same same play, different formation. This time there was double tight ends. He was actually looking downfield. He wanted to throw the ball downfield. Nothing was open. Ran out of time and just dumped it off and got a few yards out of what it could have been a loss if he would have been sacked. Nordic now has gone out of the game. Car 87. In at a wide receiver spot. Largent comes to the near side. Just Sherman Smith behind Jim Zorn. Second down and five. Largent again going in motion. The pitch comes to Sherman Smith. And Smith fights all the way to the 30-yard line. Got the first down. Good effort by Smith, who played at Miami of Ohio. Oxford, Ohio boy. Mike Fuller, 42. Reggie Williams, 57 on the tackle. Crackback, the two tight ends were in there, and they had them both on the 
same side. Makes good yardage. First down play, they've been mixing it up real well. Passing on first, running on first. It's what you have to do against the veteran defense of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Seattle battling out of a hole started this drive at their own nine yard line. Zorn throwing complete. That's Roger Carr, the nine year veteran from Louisiana Tech. Zorn thanking Robert Pratt for the protection there. Ken Riley on the play with the coverage number 13. Zarn's a very smart quarterback. They run this same play and have the wide receiver breaking in. This time he's breaking out. Gives it problems for the defensive back knowing which way he's going to go when they use that play action. Eight minutes to play in the first quarter. Scoreless game. Margit coming in motion back toward the play. There was some movement in the line. Let's see how they call it. Close charge, 64 on the offense. The call goes against Ron Essick, number 64. He made the initial move, teased him a little bit, Bob. He teased him and got a <laughs> headache from Ross Browner. He slapped him right in the head. Mike Tice comes out of the game. The Seahawks calling the plays from the sidelines. Lowry's 40-yard field goal gives San Francisco an early lead against Kansas City. First and 15. And they do it again. Now let's see whose fault it was again. Was it Essick again? I think so. I think the call may go against them. Start number 64 offense. Now Ron's a little hyped up at the moment. Any one player on the ball club can hurt hurt the offense or defense, and in this case, obviously the offense. They've cost them 10 yards, and now it's first and 20 where they had a good drive going, and they had some time of possession on their side. Mike McCormick and his staff talking it over. Tice comes back in. Sawyer goes out. And it's going to be first down 20 from the 33. the 36 yard line Rick Rosano number 51 the linebacker he makes the play beginning to rain a little bit here we had very heavy rains yesterday the field is in good shape but it is damp uh, from the rains yesterday they used the machines to remove a good deal of the water early this morning second down and 17 seven and a half to play first quarter no score complete out to the 42 yard line very close to a first down the pass caught by the tight end number 88 Pete Metzelar the rookie from Wabash Bobby Kemp the strong safety made the tackle the field is wet as you said Jay and uh, the ball is going to have to be thrown right on the mark normally on a dry field he would have been able to plant his foot and cut back to the inside he had a good uh, opportunity there to make a catch and uh, not much opportunity to make the good run. Just short. Third down. And 11, let's call it. And down goes Zorn. Eddie Edwards coming on. 73, the sixth year man from Miami. They make a big play on Zorn, and it's punting time for Jeff West. This uh, sack uh, occurred because of the defensive secondary had everybody covered. A little bit of indecision on Zorn's part as to whether or not they were going to blitz him or drop off. They fooled him, and he took a little bit too much time. Fair catch call for by Mike Fuller. He's got it at the 38-yard line, and Cincinnati will be in excellent position as they will get the ball for the second time offensively. Penalty marker down on the play. 29-yard punt. And the indication is that the infraction will go against Seattle. Ineligible member of the kicking team, number 59, downfield too soon. The penalty will be refused. Penalty, down. penalty refused. Bob, that's
that's the most popular penalty in the game next to holding, I think. Uh, it's hard to understand why. Time and time again, too many men come downfield. A scoreless game here in Cincinnati. Back with more in a moment. Raining here at Cincinnati's Riverfront Stadium. 6.22 to go in the first quarter. No score. Bengals 12th in rushing, 2nd in passing in the AFC. Start from their own 39. Over the middle, and it is complete to the tight end, Dan Ross. Then he loses the ball, and Seattle comes up with it. Number 55, Michael Jackson took it away. They had the tight end in the seam down the middle. He made the catch and then lost it. So they turn the ball right back. Over. When we come back, the Seahawks will have it. NFL 82 Studios in New York in Three Rivers Stadium. The Steelers, who have been terrible in recent weeks, trying to get it going here. Bradshaw hits Franco Harris for 19 yards. The Steelers are on the move. However, it's nothing, nothing, or 3 nothing in favor of the Steelers in the first. Jay? A moment ago, we were isolated on the tight end, Dan Ross. The pass goes to him, Bob Greasy, but... It's double coverage on the two wide receivers. Bruce Schultz, number 58, is supposed to cover him all over the field. Kenny easily knocks the ball out. Michael Jackson recovers it. It's a play-action pass, Jay, and it was very difficult to get the ball in there. He did. It was a great throw, but you're really hanging up your tight end for the defensive back. A hard-hitting defensive secondary knocks the ball loose. Turnover gives the ball to Seattle from their own 38. also down on this play. Zorn indicates that he thinks his club will still have possession. There is Ken Riley. What a performer out of Florida A&M. Yep, a call going to go against Cincinnati. The pass was intended for Sherman Smith, number 47. As you look at Forrest Gregg, he's upset. And referee Bob Frederick stepping off the penalty. We'll listen to him as he puts it down at the 47. Roughing the passer, number 75 in the defense. First down. Roughing the passer, charge to the nose tackle, Wilson Whitley, number 75. First down, Seattle at the 47 of Cincinnati. A big play by Ken Riley, a very smart play. That was not his man. His man was Paul Johns, who was running deep. He's had on the quarterback, saw the ball coming and came off and made the interception. Zorn, with time, throws and he overthrows his intended receiver, Steve Largent. Largent was well covered by Ray Griffin. And the pass overthrown and maybe on, person, on purpose. He was well covered. That's the first pass that they've thrown in Griffin's uh, area today. I expect to see some more. They're not doing anything special to Steve Largent so far in this ball game. As we said last week, the uh, Patriots double covered him, took him out of the offense. He only caught three passes, and Seattle had problems and forced Jim Zorn to go to some of the other receivers. Lewis Breton out of the game with a groin injury. That occurred, of course, Monday night in the loss at San Diego. Second and ten. Give to Sherman Smith on a delay, and he goes nowhere. Reggie Williams, the linebacker, number 57, the big guy from Dartmouth, did an excellent job. Let's get an update now as we go to NFL 82 in New York. Stadium, the Steelers have jumped out to a 10-point lead. Here, Frank Pollard bangs in from two yards out. Steelers on top this game in the first quarter. Remember, both these teams are four and three. Jay? All right, here it's scoreless. Cincinnati and Seattle. The Bengals, third and 12 in a prevent defense. Jim Zorn looking at it. Three wide receivers in there for Seattle. in front of Robert Jackson, number 37. Bo Harris, 53, the linebacker, was over there. 
Jim Zorn, you get a look at it from his angle. The linebackers are dropping straight back into a zone. Zorn has good protection, drills the ball in between the two linebackers. Good catch by Roger Carr and good concentration on the ball. Holds on to it on his way down. Carr is a more disciplined receiver now than he was at Baltimore. He seems to be getting the feel of the Seattle offense. Zorn is five out of six for 45 yards. and throw, but he was not inbound. Jim Zorn had to throw that ball uh, before he wanted to. He had to throw it into the end zone. He threw that ball, released it when Largent was on about the 15-yard line, and he had to throw it past T uh, Bobby Kemp into the end zone, and it was a tough ball to complete, but uh, he threw it the only place he could, and that was high and outside. You'll see Kemp coming in had to throw it away from Kemp and over the top, almost had a touchdown. Second down and 10. Sherman Smith to the 30. Smith started today with a 3.2 rushing average, 162 yards. Rick Rosano, number 51, the linebacker, making the tackle. Ray Wershing has kicked a 32-yard field goal, and Kansas City and San Francisco are now tied up at 3-3. And as you heard moments ago in our report from New York, Frank Pollard has scored to give Pittsburgh an early 10-0 advantage. Robert Jackson back in for the Bengals there in their prevent defense. Third and seven at the 30-yard line. is remarkable, Bob Greasy. We're not going to take that interception away from him, Jay. He's covering Steve Largent, the best receiver, covered by the best defensive back for the Bengals. Dorn throws this ball a little bit behind Steve Largent. Good vision by Ken Riley. He saw it coming all the way and makes a good return. First down, Bengals from their own 37-yard line. Pete Johnson across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Michael Jackson, the middle linebacker, number 55, on the tackle. Johnson, the power back, the all-time Cincinnati rusher. 4,518 yards starting today. Steve Kreider coming into the game, along with David Verser, as the Bengals are going to go with an extra wide receiver. They've got Dan Ross out. They actually got four in there. Collinsworth, Curtis, Verser, and Kreider. Second and five. Anderson throwing, and it is complete. Isaac Curtis has a first down at the 41-yard line. Ken Easley on the coverage over there. You see Easley in the middle of the pack. But a fine throw as Anderson put it on consignment to Curtis. They were mismatched that time. Cincinnati had four wide receivers. Here you see a linebacker. Keith Butler trying to keep up with Isaac Curtis. You can't do that. Seattle's not gone to their nickel defense in the last couple of weeks. And, yeah, and Cincinnati may test them in that area by putting in four wide receivers. That time they did it on second down. Well, Bob, they haven't used the nickel that much. We'll get some more thoughts from you on that in a moment. First and 10 at the 40. Pete Johnson. Johnson gets to the 35-yard line, stopped by Tui Asasopo. Let's go to New York for an update. Thank you, Jay Randolph. In Houston, in the Dome, the Oilers have gone on top of the Browns, 7-0. Gifford Nielsen replacing the injured Archie Manning finds Mike Renfro in the eight in the end zone for eight yards, and the Oilers on top of Cleveland in the first quarter. Jay? Well, it's been a tough year for the Oilers, but they're out in front today against Cleveland. Here it's no score, second and five at the 35 for the Bengals. And off goes to Charlie Alexander, and he doesn't get much. Jacob Green, number 70.
29 wrapped him up. Ball spotted at about the 32-yard line. We have a minute and 55 seconds remaining. That's a scoreless first quarter. M.L. Harris, number 83, coming into the game along with Rodney Holman, 82. The wide receivers are coming out. Oh, on the short yardage situation, they're going to go with Ross and Harris and Holman in there, three tight ends. Alexander and Johnson in the backfield, third and one. Going to pass off this formation. Out it comes, and that is Rodney Holman, the rookie, for a first down. A very interesting call as Holman came up with only his third catch of the year a triple tight end alignment. Well, as I'm sure Se uh, Seattle is aware, on short yardage and goal line situations, Holman has caught three passes, this being his third, and one of them was for a touchdown. When he comes in the ball game, they had, like can bring him in with a red flag. They know he may get the ball on a pass, but he was open that time. ML Harris, another tight end, has caught only eight, but he has three touchdowns. Ross, the big man, with 36. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Johnson, all the way down to the 15-yard line. John Harris on the tackle. A.L. Pete, Pete, he played at Ohio State. 16 touchdowns last season, a team record. Big Pete Johnson, 250 pounds, 6 feet tall. It's nice to have a big fullback in your backfield that you can pound the middle of the defensive line and kind of wear him down. You know, the offensive line likes to mix it up and run block sometimes. Cincinnati's doing, been doing a lot of pass blocking this year, and they enjoy run blocking. Time runs out at the end of the first quarter. A scoreless game at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. The Bengals, though, are knocking on the door. The test pilot who broke the sound barrier, General Chuck Yeager. Like most of the jets that I fly, today's cars are loaded with electrical systems. That's why in my car, I use the advanced technology of AC Delco. This Delco Freedom 2 back. With Bob Greasy, Jay Randolph, Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati, first quarter stats. Not a lot to choose from there. The Bengals, first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Bob, a moment ago, you talked about the job Pete Johnson had been doing and how important it was to have the big fullback. Now Alexander gets some important yardage. Of course, you played with two of the best, Zonka and Kick. And it was very nice to have those guys in reserve. Whenever you wanted to run the ball, Zonka was always there. Of course, we had a great offensive line, and they loved to run block. We threw the ball some, but that was a good run-blocking offensive line the quarterback to soften him up. Second down and two at the seven. And it is Alexander again inside the five-yard line. First down. Appears he has the first down by about a foot. Kenny Easley, the safety man, number 45, made the tackle. They may want to measure. They're going to bring the chains in. There is 52-year-old Chicago native Mike McCormick looking out at the scene. A scoreless first period. McCormick joined the Seahawks organization last March as their director of football operations. Took over for the deposed Jack Patera and has given a lot of spirit to this club. First down at the five. Forrest Gregg, his third year here. Big crowd here on the riverfront in Cincinnati on this Sunday. Ken Anderson, player of the year, MVP last season. 62.6% of his passes completed. The top running quarterback in professional football. Alexander got just about to the one before he was pulled back. John Harris, number 44, stopped him. Alexander, who played at LSU, getting to the one. I'm reminded it'll be LSU and Nebraska in the Orange Bowl here on NBC. Cincinnati.
Cincinnati Bengals trying to pound at that defensive line of the uh, Seahawks. They're not very tough against the run. What they're doing is spreading out into a pass formation and running inside at them. They got about a yard to go for a touchdown. And they got all three of the tight ends in there again, Ross, Harris, and Holman. on the right side behind Mike Wilson and Max Montoya. All Pete Johnson needs is a little bit of a crack and he can run over most people in this league. First touchdown of the ball game. Jackson getting there too late. A point after with Jim Breach. Set to kick it. Breach out of California. Mike Fuller will hold. in 10 plays, go 63 yards to score. Breach ready to kick it off. Paul Johns and Eric Lane set to receive the kickoff. Paul Johns from the seventh at the 20. Gets to the 24-yard line. Oliver Davis, the safety man, number 21, and number 37, Robert Jackson, along with Guy Frazier, were there to make the play. 17-yard return, and Seattle down 7 to nothing. will operate from their own 24-yard line. Jay, I think the Seahawks are ready to go now. We are told that they have scored a touchdown in the first quarter all season, so they're warmed up and ready to go and see what they can do. They've had only two field goals in the first period, two over the seven games. They have been slow starters. <laughs> I'd say so. This is Dornick. He got a couple. Reggie Williams, number 57, the right outside linebacker making the play. Mike McCormick, an all-conference performer at the University of Kansas. And originally a number one draft choice of the New York Yanks, the old Yanks back in 51. Head coaching, of course, at Philadelphia and Baltimore, was an assistant here in Cincinnati. Both these coaches influenced, I'm sure, a great deal by Paul Brown. A lot of coaches around this league were uh, influenced by Paul Brown and Vince Lombardi. It seems like everything that goes on comes from those two men. On second and seven, it's complete. The official right on the play said he had possession. Rosano made the hit as Mike Tice, the tight end, took the ball at a 45 at the 35-yard line. Well, look at it again. It didn't look to me as though Jay was a catch, but uh, it's hard to see from that angle. But the referee, as the official, is right there and had a good view of it. It was not Tice, but it was Metzelars, number 88. Paul Brown on the left, member of the Football Hall of Fame, remarkable coaching career. Third down and three at the 31-yard line, and action at the line of scrimmage. The nose tackle, Wilson Whitley, there he is, number 75, the big guy from Houston. Number one draft choice. He moved, but was he drawn off? Well, it doesn't look like it. Five-yard penalty. And number 75 on the defense. A lot of times the uh, defensive nose tackle was the easiest guy to pull off sides. He was the closest to the quarterback and his inflection. Nose tackle could hear it better than anybody else. And sometimes if you raised your voice and yelled a little bit louder than normal, you could get him to come off. Uh, the centers you, didn't like it, but the quarterbacks did. Your quarterbacks play those dirty tricks. Down the side and Metzelars, he was hit hard by Bob Kemp, the strong safety, lost 
it, but Dornick saved it for Seattle. Little play action. This is a fine throw as far as execution by Jim Zorn, but he's not going to make very many friends uh, with his tight ends by hanging the ball up there that long. Gets a tough hit by Bobby Kemp. The ball comes out. Both of these quarterbacks now have laid the ball up for their tight ends, and uh, they're going to have some headaches uh, in this ball game. First down at the 47-yard line for Seattle. Cincinnati leads 7 0. 10 minutes, 40 seconds to go, first half. Paul Byron Walker, the rookie, going motion outside. The handoff to Dornick. Dornick slashes through at the 50. Stopped by Glenn Cameron, number 50. Let's go to New York for this update. Thank you, Jay Randolph in Pittsburgh's Three River Stadium. It looks like the Steelers have regained their winning touch. Here, Terry Bradshaw finds John Stallworth in the end zone, and the Steelers have upped their lead over the Patriots to 17-0 in the second quarter. Jay? 7-0 here. The Steelers doing a job up the way. Coming out of the game there, Glenn Cameron. Cameron, the linebacker. Number 52 has replaced him. Well, the Bengals hurting a little bit at the linebacker spots. Here is a throw, double coverage against Steve Largent. Bobby Kemp and Ken Riley, 26 and 13, were back there. Bob Razzano is playing for Cameron, and LeClaire is not in there. Dinkle <laughs> is in there now, so. Uh, They've got a little problem with the linebacking situation to the Bengals. They had a lot of linebackers in there that time that are that are different than the starting ones. Hank Bull, the defensive coordinator from the Bengals, was a very aggressive one, and he had them all coming that time. They had a little blitz on. Zorn read it, tried to throw the ball downfield. Steve Largent, Riley again, his man coverage. Riley saw what was going on, went over and tried to help out, and almost got another interception. Zorn may have called an audible here as he looks over. He sees Oliver Davis and Robert Jackson in there to prevent defense. Bengals were up there, gave him the same look like they were going to blitz this time. This time they pulled out, double covered the outside men. The wide receivers were double covered. The halfbacks were man to man, and that's where he went to, but it was good coverage. Third punt of the day afternoon for Jeff West. Mike Fuller is downfield. Fuller at the 17, steps up at the 20, gets to the 22 yard line. So the Bengals will have it after a 33 yard punt. Cincinnati leads the Seahawks 7 to nothing. Tracy J. Randolph. Cincinnati has the lead 7-0. Seattle has had the ball, the opportunities today, but has yet to make anything happen on that scoreboard. They're having it a little bit more than they had last week. Last week they only had 18 minutes offensively, and that's very not very much time to get anything done. Today they've got the ball a little bit more, but they need to get something accomplished. The Bengals start from their own 23 after the punt. Pitch back to Alexander. run of the year, 12 yards from scrimmage. John Harris, number 44 on the tackle. I think what, what you're seeing here, Jay, is a, a lot of uh, running on the part of the Cincinnati Bengals. Last Monday night uh, against uh, San Diego, they were throwing the ball a lot. Today, they're running. Here's Glenn Cameron, who was shaken up, came out of the game. They're attending to him. We'll try to get a report on just what the injury is. First down at the 34. are down and Anderson has a free toss out to Johnson Johnson bumped out of bounds at the 43 yard line Michael Jackson the linebacker over there making the play quarterback like to have that situation where he's almost sure that the opposing team is offside or the penalty is on them oil oh, yeah. and you like to know that too yeah. if you can pull them off with your canes and know it ahead of time uh, you get a free shot downfield. You can do defense. Number 79 was offside, and the penalty will be refused. It was Jacob Green who was offside, and Anderson looking to the bench. The problem is, Jay, you got to make sure that you know who's offside because you can make a big mistake. 
looking downfield. He's not sure of who was offside, so he dumps it out to Johnson, who is a very good, a good, very good receiver for the Bengals, along with being a great runner. Johnson had caught 24 for 202 yards coming into today's game. He gets the call and gets a couple. He has the first down at the 45-yard line. Nash, as you see, is back into the game. Tui Asasopo bothered by the knee problem. Mike White was in there earlier. He was activated this week. First down. We have 8.25 to go in the first half. The Bengals got a touchdown from Johnson from one yard out at 13.09 of the second period. Anderson with time. Out to Johnson. And got it to midfield, but we might have a clip. Robert Hardy is shaken up for the Seahawks. Clipping. I think it was Blair Bush, the center. Bush, incidentally, is from Seattle, Washington, went to school at the University of Washington. Our congratulations to the Huskies in that come from behind victory in the Hello Bowl last night. A little option, there. little option screen. Uh, Johnson going out. Maybe we'll see the clip here. 75. Robert Hardy is coming out. Johnson getting the ball. Hardy going to make the tackle. There There's a clip right there. Right there. Ooh. Oh, you hate to see those things happen. Indeed, you do. We have a timeout with eight minutes remaining in the first half. The Bengals seven. Take a look at the clip a moment ago as Robert Hardy comes across and goes down right there. And Hardy was helped off. Hartburn, four-year man from Jackson State. There's the man who charged with the clip, Blair Bush. Steve Kleiner's in the game now along with David Burser, four wide receivers. First and 27 from the 28. Intercepted. Coming across to make the play. And in fine fashion, John Harris. The pass appeared to be intended for Chris Collinsworth. Harris comes across his fourth interception of the year, and Seattle is going to get it in very good shape. It's a big play by Harris. Kenny Anderson thinks he's got him open for a second. He doesn't throw many interceptions. Harris gets over there, cuts right inside of him. You know, of the four defensive backs in the secondary, three of them are first-round draft choices, and Harris, he led the AFC in interceptions last year. They're good ones. He's there on the right, and Anderson on the left. Harris, a 29-yard return for a touchdown with an interception in the game here last season. The Seahawks led here 21 to nothing when Turk Schoner came off the bench to spark Cincinnati's come from behind victory 27-21. See what the Seahawks can do with it after the turnover. First down at the 43-yard line of the Bengals. Dorney down to the 35. Good thinking that time by Jim Zorn. Glenn Cameron is back in the game at right inside linebacker number 50. He made the play. Seattle's defense is doing their, their job. Uh, Cincinnati has had the ball four times. They've gotten a fumble and interception off the Bengals, putting their offense in good position. So time for the uh, Seattle offense to move it in and get some points. New nose tackle in the game for the Bengals, number 61, Jerry Boryarski, the third, uh, second year man from Pittsburgh. Margin in motion, second down and two. Dornick again, and very close to the first down. A number seven draft pick of the New York Giants came to the Seattle Club in 79 in the trade. Boyarski and Edwards, 61 and 73, made the tackle just short of the first down. It'll be third and in inches. 7 0 Cincinnati. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching KING TV, Channel 5, Seattle. You see Hardy going off. Here is a big play for Seattle. Dornick, yeah! he got it. 
with a tremendous bit of effort. Reggie Williams makes the tackle number 57. Hardy going in for some precautionary x-rays, as they always do. The National Football League teams all have their own x-ray units right at the stadium for the games during the regular season. It's a good addition. They added that a few years back, and uh, it's a very good addition. First down at the 27-yard line. Seattle trying to get back in it. Six minutes to play in the first half. Thorne throwing downfield and overthrowing Roger Carr. Bobby Kemp was right there with Roger Carr. Bob, that's a, a tough throw, a, a timing throw. You know your man is going to go toward the pole, and you know you're going to let it go and hope he can get there. It's a tough throw. It's a, not an easy pass to complete, and you may ask, why did they throw it? That time he had to because they had an all-out blitz. We call a double safety blitz. The Bengals were sending one more man than the Seahawks could block. Zorn knew it, read it, laid it up. He just didn't give it enough air for him to have the opportunity to run underneath him. But he made the right decision, just didn't execute it properly. Second down and 10, Largent in motion to the near side. The pitch to Sherman Smith. On the run, Sherman cut in the corner, bumped out of bounds, short of the first down. Penalty marker is down. He got it to the 21-yard line. Mike Fuller, 42. Reggie Williams, 57, making the play for Cincinnati. And the discussion now with referee Bob Frederick and his crew. Personal foul, clipping against Seattle. That's a toughie at this point in the proceedings. Their offense is stopping themselves. The, the two uh, illegal motion penalties early in the game, and now this one, uh, you just can't have this on offense and execute. It's tough enough against a good defense. Personal foul, clipping on number 83, offense. said 83. I don't... Do we have no 83? He may have been 33. I think that was it right there, and I think that was a poor call because the continuation rule, he had contact with him, and the man turned on him. I think you're right. Second down, 23. Two wide receivers set to the right. Zorn throwing, and a fine catch! 26-yard line. It was Largent who went high to make the play. Mike Fuller made the tackle immediately. Largent sacrificed himself on that one. This was an outstanding catch. Good protection. Zorn throws it a little bit high in between the linebackers. Good throw, a little high. Great catch. Great catch, by Here we see him running down man on man. The corner has outside technique. Largent just getting into the seam. Had him in the Pro Bowl with me a few years back, Jay. A fine receiver. He had that clock in his head. He knew when to get open. Third and eight at the 25. Thorn over the middle. Incomplete. Incomplete. Ray Griffin did an excellent job. New England comes back with his 43 yarder his longest of the year is 48 he's kicking off Rodney Tate and David Verser are set to receive that's David Verser coming out at the 10 in a little trouble and spun out of bounds right at about the 15 yard line over there to make the play for Seattle was Dupek number 25 he does an excellent job and we're isolated on this special teams expert 
This is the uh, Suicide Squad, as they used to call them. Then they came up with a glorified name of Special Teams. Whatever you call it, he's, uh, he's doing a great job. The headhunter, Dufac, made the play. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. There's Dufac. Played at Michigan. starting today and you see his rushing stats for this season not running as much now as he once did personal foul against Seattle well apparently after the slide somebody came in there and spiked him a little bit good coverage in the secondary Anderson was looking around here you see the linebackers dropping straight back that's a key to the quarterbacks at their zone coverage nobody was open the rush got to him you know, this is a bad play on the part of Manu Tuyasasoko. Late hit. He got several penalties against the Seattle Seahawks. It's stopping them from scoring points and also helping the other team move down the field. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Coming up the middle, Alexander. He didn't get much, maybe a yard. Michael Jackson, number 55. Bryant, number 77, were there. See Easley coming out of the pile, number 45. Number 72, Joe Nash is now in there at tackle. And the other tackle now is White, number 70, as Tui Asasopo is out of there. Yeah, correct myself. It was not Manu, but uh, the point is good that they're stopping themselves with stupid penalties. And I think it was Nash in underneath there with White. They caught them for unnecessary roughness. Pete Johnson. Johnson close to the first down at the 43-yard line. Keith Simpson, the cornerback, number 42, made the play. We'll go to New York, NFL 82, for an update. Thank you, Jay Randolph. In the Astrodome in Houston, the Browns, with Paul McDonald at the quarterbacking spot for the second week in a row. Here he finds Dave Logan down the left sideline. Logan goes all the way, 56 yards to score, and the Browns now lead the Oilers 10-7 in the second. Jay? And the other Ohio team is leading Seattle 7-3. Third down and one coming for Cincinnati. They've got the three tight ends again in there, Ross, Harris, and Holman. Alexander and Johnson have gone all the way behind Ken Anderson. And the handoff going to Alexander. He appears to have the first down. Jeff Bryant stood him up number 77. Michael Jackson number 55 in the middle. And as they unravel him, we'll see if he got the first down. Get a good end zone view. There's Michael Jackson stuffing the hole. Pete Johnson leading the blocking. Football player has gotten into some problems the last few weeks by being a little bit too emotional, and he's been hurting the uh, cause, uh, the defense of the Seattle Seahawks. Good you know, to be aggressive. Yeah, he is a very aggressive young man. Four personal fouls in the last couple of weeks, but this has been a much better defensive unit, more intensity. Got four wide receivers in there. Anderson throws. Kansas. The 
extra point try. Jim Breach. Mike Fuller's holding. Ryder used to do the holding, but he has an injured finger. It is up, and it's good. Two minutes, 13 seconds left to play in the first half. And Cincinnati leads it 14 to 3. First Greg on the left. Mike McCormick on the right. Greg's Bengals leading it 14 to 3. Jim Breach set to kick off. Eric Lane and Paul John set to receive. The Bengals striking quickly. This crowd erupting as Bursar took the pass and went for a touchdown, a 55-yard play. Eric Lane is at the 20. The 25, out to the 28, penalty marker goes down. Penalty marker was thrown at the 25-yard line. Ron Simpkins, number 56 on the tackle, a 20-yard return. Holding against Seattle, so again, a crippling penalty here for Mike McCormick's crew. You know, one of the trademarks of the man I played with uh, through all my years in the NFL, Don Shula, was the small amount of penalties that they had against them, the least penalized team in the league. Here we're seeing Seattle really hurt themselves on the last touchdown drive. The personal foul really hurt them. against Rodell Thomas. First and 10 from the 16-yard line. Jim Zorn on first down, in trouble, throws it away. The Bengals want intentional grounding. Good pressure was put on by Reggie Williams. The referee standing right behind the uh, quarterback is the man who has to make that call. In this case, I think he had a pretty good uh, view of it. I don't see anybody that's going to be around Dorn with a number in the 20s, 30s, or 40s that could have caught that ball. He should have went up and looked around. I think he would have had a good, uh, a good flag there. Two-minute warning being given to both benches. We'll be back with more from Riverfront Stadium and since service by the National Football League. Coming up at halftime, of course, NFL 82. Mike McCormick would like to have a score coming up to get his club back in it. Second down and 10 from the 16. Zorn throws incomplete. Eddie Edwards was all over him. Williams also there. 73 and Williams 57 and a good job by the prevent defense of the Bengals there wasn't much for him to throw to out there Bob the, de the defensive secondary in the zone took away all the receivers and Zorn was looking around and allowed the rush to finally get to him <laughs> credit that pressure to the defensive secondary in the backs for keeping everybody covered until the rush got there I wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea down here to see him roll out here I think it would be an excellent ten. idea he can do it Cincinnati and three for the Seahawks. Well, you know, New Year's is a very traditional day on NBC, a lineup of college football that is tops in every way. At 1.30 Eastern time, the Fiesta Bowl comes your way. Oklahoma, that means you'll see Marcus Dupree against the number one ranked defense of Arizona State. And then the granddaddy of them all. More than 100,000 will gather at Pasadena's Rose Bowl, and you'll see Anthony Carter, Michigan, going against UCLA, the Bruins. And then a spectacular evening of action, the Orange Bowl game with 
Nebraska and the Tigers of LSU and all the pageantry of that great affair from the Orange Bowl in Miami. That's all New Year's Day on NBC Sports. Bob Greasy, that Orange Bowl game is always something very special and LSU's an underdog, but Jerry Stovall did a great job with that club and uh, that should be a real head knock. I'd tune in just to watch the halftime show. That's right. West to punt, Mike Fuller is downfield. West gets the kick away, Fuller at the 44. Fuller steps away, penalty marker goes down as Fuller got to the 41 yard line. Fuller was hit on the play by the Seahawks. Six on the clock. Rodell Thomas, number 59, 35-yard punt, and a penalty is indicated against the Cincinnati Bengals. And it's going to be stepped off by referee Bob Frederick. Back to the 48. Illegal block, number 49 on the kick return goes against Guy Frazier, the reserve linebacker. 136 left to go in the first half. Two timeouts remaining for these Bengals. They lead it 14 to 3. Archie Griffin, number 45, is in the game. Anderson with time. Throwing complete to the near sideline. Going out of bounds, Steve Kreider to stop the clock. Terry Justin, number 26, had the coverage. Kreider, besides playing some fine football, uh, does some writing in the newspapers here. Uh, he and one of the columnists had a point-counterpoint feature this morning about whether the playoff system that we're using in this strike-shortened year is any good. I don't see that it makes any difference, because that's what we're going to do. I don't see how they can come up with anything better. I don't either. Johnson and Alexander out of the game, as we indicated. Just Archie Griffin behind his quarterback. Second down and three. And the throw is short of Kreider. And maybe wisely so, because Kerry Justin, the extra defensive back, was coming up quick. Had that ball been on the letters, he might have been able to pick it away. The strength of Seattle, as we've said, is their pass coverage or pass defense. The, the lone touchdown that... Uh, the Bengals got through the air, was on a blitz to David Verser. They haven't thrown the ball downfield many times. It's been a lot of times dumping it off to Pete Johnson. Archie Griffin is in there now. He's an excellent receiver coming out of the backfield. Three wide receivers set to the left, third and three. Over the middle, there he is. Collinsworth has a first down at the 30-yard line. He was wide open. John Harris made the tackle. Bob Greasy, they put all three of them left and let them go out there and flooded it. The thing I'm impressed with is the way the Seattle defenders are jamming the receivers. Here's a throw to the other side, complete to Isaac Curtis. A first down at the 18-yard line. Kenny Easley had the coverage. He made the tackle. 57 seconds left to go in this first half. They didn't jam Isaac Curtis enough. You, know, you saw... Uh, and getting by the front man, double zone coverage, easily has to come over and cover him deep and short. Kenny Anderson has done this a few times. Two-minute drill, moving the ball club down. This is a big series here. They take a timeout with 57 seconds remaining. They have one timeout left. Isaac Curtis, and I'll just say a word about him, played at San Diego State, now in his 10th year. He's the Bengals' all-time receiver. 357 catches coming into today's game for more than 6,000 yards. I want to remind you about next weekend on NBC. It's the final weekend of the regular season. The figures are astronomical on who might get in and who might not. But NFL 82 will kick off all the action at 12. You'll see the Jets battle Kansas City. The Bengals take on the Oilers. The Bills face New England. Bob, you and I will be up at Foxborough for that one. The Cleveland Browns meet the Steelers. At 2, some of you will see Miami and Baltimore. And at 4, the Raiders square off with a high-powered offensive Chargers. The Broncos match up with the Seahawks. That's all next Sunday on NBC Sports, the home of the Super Bowl. Don't forget to check your local listings for the action in your area. 10 Cincinnati. Bengals leading 14 to 
three. They have it at the Seahawk 15-yard line. Out it comes to Archie Griffin. Griffin is down to the three-yard line. Keith Simpson made the tackle. You mentioned earlier, Griffin is a good receiver. That time, the deep stuff was covered, and he pitched it to him, and they got good yardage. Clock running, 34 seconds. Out again, it comes to Griffin, and he is hit at the five-yard line. A fierce tackle there by Kenny Easley. Easley coming up along with Simpson to make the play. Timeout with 23 seconds left. Same type of play, both plays that you just saw. Anderson looking into the end zone. Zone coverage on the part of the Seattle Seahawks. Nothing out there. He swung the ball out to uh, Archie Griffin. The first time he wasn't covered so well. The next time they said, do it once, but don't do it twice. And they come up and hit him good, good hard lick. Oh, that easily. He sticks his nose in there, doesn't he? He does. He's a good uh, defensive back. Was a quarterback in high school. I got to get that in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're the quarterback. You're now out of timeouts. 23 seconds left as we look again to that first pass out to Griffin when everybody was shut down downfield. You see his ability. Two-time Heisman Trophy winner. All right, Bob Greasy, you're the quarterback. You're at the five-yard line. You lead at 14 to 3. You have 23 seconds left. You're out of timeouts. The key thing is you have no timeouts. You can you can run, you cannot run the ball, but you can run off two or three passes if they're incomplete. If you complete a pass and it's not in the end zone, you have a problem. So very simply, the bottom line is you got to pass and you've got to throw it in the end zone or make it incomplete. I look at this record of Anderson's, Bob, and I think you can appreciate it as much as anyone. 169 career touchdowns coming into today's game and 131 interceptions. He throws it to the guy that's wearing the same color jersey as he does. That's right. Here we go. Second and five. A lot of time. Back he comes, and it is intercepted by Easley. Oh, what a great play he made. Well, Anderson wanted to force it in there. He didn't have anything. For one second, I thought he might try to run through the left side, but a big interception here for Easley. Good coverage on the part of the Seahawks. They're double covering the outside guys. Kenny starts to scramble, comes back, and doesn't see everybody, doesn't see easily. What an athlete he is. A great athlete, started four years at UCLA. Makes a great interception and a big play for the Seahawks to keep him in this ballgame. That's the third interception of the season for Kenny Easley. Anderson now is 13 out of 18, 167 yards, and a couple of interceptions. Well, the Bengals miss a golden opportunity here in the final seconds of this first half as Eastley comes up with a big, big play. Dornick getting the ball and being ridden out over there. Ross Browner, number 79, leading the way. And the end of the first half. The Bengals lead it 13 to 3, but I think Bob very quickly the Seahawks have got to be pleased that they're not in worse trouble than they are. They do, and they could be so much better off if they weren't having all these penalties on offense. The one roughing the quarterback pass, the one roughing the quarterback when Anderson was running was on the same drive they had 85 yards and a touchdown. All right, we'll continue with NFL 82. We'll be back with more. Don't throw many interceptions, especially down in that area of the uh, of the field. He always comes out with at least three, and that may have been what kept uh, Seattle in this ball game. Here we got to look at it again. It was indeed a play that shows you the great athletic ability that Easley has. Anderson wanted to throw the ball to his left, came back and did not see every bear, every player on the opposing team saw his receiver and easily reading the quarterback's eyes had enough athletic ability to come back and pick the ball off and make the catch. Here's what Easley had to say today. To stop the Bengals today, the uh, Seahawks will have to uh, limit the amount of effectiveness of Ken Anderson drop back pass, five step passing attack uh, to Kreider, uh, their great receiver Chris Collinsworth, and the tight end Ross. Uh, make him pass the ball on a seven step drop and to scramble a little bit more and not allow him to come back and set up in five steps and pass the ball on rhythm. 
We'll be back with more from Riverfront Stadium right after these messages and also a word. The first scoring play of the game at 13.09 of the second period. Johnson from one yard out. Did a good job, Bob. Just ran over a couple people. It's, it's tough to stop somebody that big. And the other score came on a 55-yard connection, Anderson to Verser. Anderson saw the blitz coming. Verser was at the outlet, just standing there on the sideline. He got the ball and made a long run out of it. Getting set to start the second half. The Seahawks, Norm Johnson to kick off. Tate, 23, and Verser, 81, set to receive. 14-3, the Bengals, as we go to the third quarter of action. That's Verser at the four. And he is dumped, and a penalty marker goes down as Verser went across the 15-yard line. Bruce Scholes, the linebacker, number 58, making the play. See Scholes right there in the middle of your picture. And we'll see what this penalty is. Referee Bob Frederick indicates a push in the back against Cincinnati, and that will back them up. Word just passed along to us that Steve Grogan, the quarterback of New England, has a mild concussion. He will not play in the second half at Pittsburgh. Illegal block, number 86 on the kick return. The call going against Steve Kreider. With Alexander and Johnson in the backfield, Curtis Collinsworth and Ross, and up front, Munoz, Lapham, Bush, Montoya, and Wilson. First down from the seventh, Pete Johnson. Johnson gets out to about the eight or nine. There's the defensive arrangement. Green, Hardy, Tuiasosopo, and Bryant. Tuiasosopo is being spelled now by Nash. Butler made that last tackle, and along with Scholes and Jackson, they're the linebackers. Simpson, Brown, Easley, and Harris in the secondary. One of the Bengals shaken up now. A Bengals trainer, Marvin Polins, his assistant, Bill Conley. Dr. Ballou, staff out there. Grad, along with coach Boris Gray with a timeout. The Bengals lead it 14 to 3. Back with more in a moment. Today's game is brought to you by the new Chrysler Corporation, quality engineered to be the best. By ColecoVision, the arcade quality home video game system. And by the investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old fashioned way, they earn it. Ready to go. Glenn Bujnak, now at right guard number 74, replacing Max Montoya, shaken up on the last play. Montoya came off under his own power. On second down and seven, Charlie Alexander slanting to the right side, gets to the 13-yard line. Mike White, number 70, making the play. Anthony Munoz, number 78 at left tackle, an isolated view of his play. One of the top draft choices that the Bengals have uh, had over the last three or four years. Good choices that have come in and played. One of the reasons why they've been so successful the last couple of years. Saw Steve Kreider come into the backfield for the Bengals or come into the alignment for the Bengals. Kreider, the wide receiver, 86. Archie Griffin is in there now with Pete Johnson. Third and five from the 13. Jacob Green, 79, leading the way. Anderson coming into today's game. The quarterback had been sacked a total of 23 times. Give credit on that play to Michael Jackson, the middle linebacker. Kenny Anderson was looking for Archie Griffin coming out of the backfield. We said earlier that they do not go to nickel coverages on third down. They feel their linebackers can cover, and that was a good example. McAnally to punt from his own end zone. A good rush. Easily almost blocked it. Downfield, Johns. Johns at the 45. Goes down as he crossed the 45-yard line. So Seattle is going to have very excellent position. A penalty marker now down. A 41-yard punt. Jeff 
shoe number 59 was there to make the play and referee Bob Frederick and his crew talking things over. Another push in the back this time against Seattle. A lot of penalties have hurt the Seattle club. You know, and you uh, you wonder why? Why Seattle? Why is this happening to them? But they're not a. A lot of it has to do with the youth. The illegal block, number 22, on the kick return team. Call against Dave Brown of the Seahawks. A lot of times, young players who are not that disciplined will do things just to try to impress, to do something. They're not on the field. The special team players get an opportunity to be on the field. They want to do something, but they have to be disciplined to do it within the rules. First and ten from their own 43. Zorn throwing, and it is intercepted. Intercepted by Ken Riley. Oh, wait a minute. I can't, it was not Riley. I can't tell who it was. He's down there in all of that. But it was not Riley. We'll look at it again, and maybe we can pick up who took it. Somebody took it out of the air and then ran right into all the team down there. It's a play-action pass. This I think looks it was like, Fuller. Like something they had specially designed for the defense. Something that they may have seen. Fuller gets over playing in place of John Harris. Mike Fuller. And it's his 17th career interception. Zorn threw four interceptions last week against New England. Has had a couple here today. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. The Bengals with it. Third quarter, 12.53 to play. Pitch back comes to Alexander. Alexander gets near the 40-yard line. Alexander, a number one draft choice. Stop made by Keith Butler, number 53. Montoya has come back into the game for the Bengals at right guard, number 65. You'll remember he was shaken up a little while ago. It's going to be second down and a long three at the 41-yard line. Collinsworth comes to the near sideline along with Isaac Curtis. First down at the 44. Mike White, number 70, made the play. The Seahawks, with Hardy and Tuiasa Sopo both hurting, playing backup men at the defensive tackles. They were very susceptible to the run against the run before coming into the ball game. Losing your two defensive tackles doesn't help that situation one bit. Cincinnati Bengals are taking advantage of it by running straight ahead. The three tight ends are in there now. Alexander and Johnson in the backfield. Third and a yard. And it is Alexander. And it's going to be close. We'll probably get a measurement. Jacob Green was there, number 79. Also getting up, number 55, Michael Jackson. I don't know. It doesn't look like he got enough. Be very close to the fans here already starting to do a little quarterbacking of their own they're saying go 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 if they didn't they say go or they hollered for pete if they for fourth down fourth down already now let's see now they're short it's by about a foot and mcanally will come in to punt that's a good choice uh, jay they've got a good defense they've been playing well all they put the ball down, play defense, and then get good field position back. A good choice, but not a popular choice. Not a popular one, but you don't need to create any momentum for the Seahawks if they would have stopped them on that fourth down play, give them good field position. McAnally, who played collegiately at Harvard, gets the kick away. Paul Johns returning it. 29-yard line. Timeout. The Bengals 14. The 
Seahawks three. Back with more in a moment. 35-yard punt by McAnally a moment ago. Not punting up to a year ago, and he had a very fine 45-yard average. There's Breeden, the big play cornerback, sitting it out with a pulled groin, injured Monday night. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Dornick got a first down, bumped out of bounds as he neared the 40-yard line. Mike Fuller, the safety man, coming over to make the play. Kansas City and San Francisco are 10-6, 12-04 left to play in the third quarter. The Chiefs playing better of late. Detroit leading Tampa Bay 21-13. They have 325 left in the third period. They've gotten a lot stronger since the strike, has Detroit. A very talented group. Monty Clark, and who used to work for your old team, Miami. Riley makes the tackle as the pass went to Mike Tice, the tight end, short of a first down at the 45-yard line. Tice out of Maryland. He was a quarterback. They made him a tight end, and he's not a bad one. It's a little slant out by the tight end. A great play by Ken Riley, who is the cornerback out there. His man comes in, Roger Carr, and he lets him go. He sees the pass coming out, stays there, and makes a tackle. That man has been around for 14 years in the National Football League, and he has done it with his brains and good vision. He sees the ball and knows where it's going all the time. Second down and four. And off going to David Hughes, who's in the backfield for the first time. Hughes out of Boise State, the second-year man, averaging 3.6 per carry. Hit by Ross Browner and Reggie Williams, and we take a look at Browner. This is the pits. Browner throwing him at or side his man, Ron Essink. And then he gets the help from a lot of his buddies. The Spingo defense has been much tougher today than it was six days ago against the San Diego Chargers. And, of course, they've been very tough up until that point. They dropped from one of the leaders all the way out of the top after Monday night. Third and two. Sherman Smith. I don't think he got there. I don't think he did either. Cameron and Williams and Harris were all there. Seattle only three of nine on third down conversions. One of the Bengals is shaken up. Number 73, Eddie Edwards. Morris Gregg calls him an exceptional player. Another number one draft choice. Played at Miami and Florida. Hustles all the time. He says he wishes he had 45, just like Eddie Edwards. He's always hustling, always looking to improve himself. Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati. Temperature in the 50s, a light rain falling. The Bengals and the Seahawks were scoreless after a quarter. The Bengals got 14 in the second period, the Seahawks three. That's the score. Reminder about college basketball coming your way on NBC Sports. January 15th, Charlottesville, Virginia. The defending national champs, North Carolina, they've had a little trouble. They're going against Ralph Sampson and the Cavaliers. They were beaten out in they Hawaii had, by Shaman. They had a little trouble, too. Uh, that should be a good one. North Carolina, Virginia, January the 15th. Jeff West gets the punt away. Fuller lets it go and into the end zone. The old rule prevailed. Don't touch it inside the 10. A 52-yard punt. We have 8-12 left to play in the third quarter. The Bengals lead. Al's entertaining here. Happy holidays to you and yours from all of us at NBC Sports. Bob Gracie and Jay Randolph with you. 14 to 3, the Bengals lead it. First and 10 for them from their own 20 yard line. Anderson with all kinds of time decides to run and gets out to the 27 yard line. Anderson threw 56 passes against the Chargers on Monday night. Only one of them intercepted. He also threw a couple of touchdowns in that game. It gave him a season plus two in touchdown passes nine, and interception was seven. He's thrown a touchdown pass here today. Twelve seasons in the NFL. 
some record. Comeback Player of the Year last year, along with Player of the Year and a lot of other awards, and uh, justly uh, deserved. Rodney Tate is in the game, and that is Tate, the rookie from Texas. And did he lose the ball in under there? Looked like they were in a battle for it. Tate, a fourth-round draft choice. Take a look at the offensive line setting up for this draw play. It's a big hole to the left. Dave Lapham misses his man. He should have went for the linebacker. He did fumble the ball. The ball did come out. Keith Simpson was right there, along with number 79, Jacob Green, and 72, Joe Nash. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching KING-TV, Channel 5, Seattle. Third and less than a yard to give going to Johnson. And it's going to depend where they put it down. It's close. Kenny Easley came up to make the play. I'll tell you, this Seattle bunch on defense has really played tough. Official timeout as referee Bob Frederick and his crew want to look at it, and one of the Seahawks is shaken up. They played well defensively all day. Their one lapse they had on the blitz when uh, Verser got the touchdown. But we said going into this game that that Zorn would have to have a good day. He's 9 of 18 with 82 yards. He's had a couple passes intercepted. Seattle needs to do more offensively to get in this ball game. The defense has turned the ball over for him. They need to do more offensively. For 1983, Simpson there on the bench, shaken up, has come off. Played at Memphis State, a real hitter. He's okay, apparently. Bengals did not get the first down on that last play, and McAnally has come on to do the punting. So again, Seattle very tough. They send three men back. Johns is the deep man to receive this kick from Pat McAnally. McAnally has it away. Paul Johns at the 27, over the 30. the free agent rookie comes right up the field so many of your putt returns are broken by getting through the first line the first wave of defense then he gets blindsided from the side and fortunately holds on to the football 43 yard punt a 28 yard return david hughes cuts the corner he's bumped out of bounds at the 40 yard line mike fuller making the play for the Bengals over there with ross browner number 79 you get the feeling here, Bob, that if the Seahawks could get something going and score here, we have 5.51 left in the third quarter, that this one might very well go to the wire. The Seahawks' defense has rallied the club. You can feel a little momentum churning down there for Mike McCormick's punt. The defense has kept him in the ballgame and has created situations. The offense is stopping itself with penalties and inconsistencies. That's larger in motion. of times last week clipping against Seattle and again another another very tough penalty against the Seahawks I saw Mike Tice number 86 holding his hands up as if he didn't do anything and that's usually a dead giveaway that uh, they're throwing the flag on him we'll have to wait and see David Hughes returns to the backfield with a play let's listen to Bob Frederick illegal block on the offense number 86 Second down. Mike Tice, the tight end from Maryland. Call went against him, so it'll be second down and 16. The ball at the 49-yard line of the Seahawks. Roger Carr goes to the left side. Largent is right. And number 88, Pete Metzelar, as the tight end jumps off. 
Salars, the rookie from Wabash. And again, Seattle has a problem. You know, you hate to belabor a point, Jay, but it's part of the storyline of this ball game. Number 88 on the offense. Seattle has so many young players, especially in the on the offense. Uh, the tight end, both tight ends, one's a rookie. Pete Metzlars, Mike Tice is a second-year man. Ron Essing is in his third year. The people that are making the mistakes are the young players. They need to be more disciplined. You can't move down the field if the yellow flag's on the field. Second and 21. Zorn, a quick one, and it's complete. It was Paul Johns who made the catch. Johns doing a nice job, very close to the first down. It's going to be about a yard short. Ray Griffin made the tackle at the 35. This is an excellent throw by Jim Zorn. He takes three steps back, throws it between the linebackers, right on, hits him right on stride. It's a big play. They need some offensive people to make some big plays and get them going. Zorn had that same play going on the other side to Carr in the latter stages of the game last week. Looked like it might have been a touchdown, but Carr dropped it. And they give them a first down here. So, Seattle comes bouncing back, trying to claw their way into it. It's 14-3, to the Bengals with 5.20 left to go third quarter. David Hughes in the backfield. Three wide receivers in the game. Byron Walker is on the wing right. Out to Walker. He makes the catch at the 33. Bo Harris, 53, the linebacker right there. There wasn't a great deal Walker could do. A lot of pressure that time on Zorn. He threw low, and Walker was just happy to come up with the ball. They actually had four wide receivers in the game. So going without a huddle, he tried to get the same slant pattern. The linebackers were deep, so he dumped it off to the short. Man. Second down and eight at the 33. They're working on Griffin, the cornerback. And what they're doing, they're in a hurry-up offense. Mike McCormick was waving, get up the line of scrimmage, call the play from there, and not allow Henry Bulla, the defensive coordinator, to get his calls in. Make him do it from the field. First and 10 at the 23. Zorn underthrows his intended receiver. out there with the coverage that stops the clock with 358 remaining in the third quarter Seattle coming back from a couple of tough penalties gotten it up there facing now second and ten at the 23 I like to change up the change of pace if you're not doing well offensively change something up go up the line of scrimmage run a few plays it was working for him Dorn just do that one a little bit short and they lost the momentum for a second big play to see if they can get it back play by Williams. It was supposed to go inside. The man influenced him. He's blocking Williams outside. The receiver, the runner bounces outside and Reggie makes a good play. That play was supposed to go inside of Reggie Williams. The Bengals go to the prevent defense. Third and ten at the 23. Roger Carr is set to the left. Large and right. up there. They're covering their man man-to-man. -man. Zorn reads the coverage well, throws it a little bit short. Roger Carr makes a big play. A ball spotted just inside the 10-yard line. First and goal to go for Seattle. Be alert for aggressive defense down here. 
here, maybe some blitzes. Hank Bull is going to make you earn it. David it Hughes is the single setback. And number 61, Jerry Boyarski playing the nose tackle for Wilson Whitley. He appeared to move. Was he pulled off? There's the move. Half the distance to the goal. Boyarski jumping off. Whitley, the big nose tackle, not in there. And Boyarski getting the call right now. The ball now just inside the five-yard line. Hughes and Hughes got to the two. What a splendid job Zorn did in getting that ball to his single setback. It looked like he might go down for a loss. I think he gets stepped on by his center. No, he just slips on his own. Field is a little wet. This was could have been a critical mistake in a big area of the field. They have an opportunity to score their first touchdown, get back in this ball game. Could have been a big mistake. They were shut out last week. Goal line defense for Cincinnati. Second and goal to go. Sherman Smith there with Hughes. Out it comes. It's a touchdown to Steve Largent. Throwing back across the green. Zorn to Largent. Largent actually comes behind the line of scrimmage this ball. This is a play that several teams in the NFL are using. You see Largent coming across your screen behind the line. Creates problems for the defensive back that has to come across and cover him. He has to avoid all the penetration, all the linebackers. That's something that different teams around the league have used. You see it on film. You put it in your offense. Why not if it works? Norm Johnson kicks the point after and with 2.19 to do here as Largent got it in. Here's another look at the touchdown in motion behind the line of scrimmage. Kenny Riley sees what's happening and goes behind the defense, cannot get there in time, tries to make the tackle. That's another one of the tricks that the Seattle Seahawks use on offense. 49 career touchdowns now for Largent. There's the drive, 45 yards, nine plays. pursuit for this special team. Seattle's defenses really doing a job. Leading the way. Leading the way for the Seahawks. Robinson, the linebacker, making the play. It's a big series for the, uh, the offense of the Bengals. The momentum has definitely shifted over to the Seahawks. They need to do something, keep the ball, move it down the field, and hopefully get some points. Single setback, Pete Robinson, or Pete Johnson, I should say, behind Kenny Anderson. They got two tight ends in the game. Rolling the other way, and down goes Anderson. quarterback takes one way rolls out the other easily comes up to force it his man open downfield but he couldn't see him. loss of three second and 13 at the six Alexander back in there along with Pete Johnson now behind Ken Anderson Anderson from his own end zone throwing out to Johnson Johnson gets to the 
the 17-yard line. Play made by Michael Jackson, the linebacker, number 55. Well, at the top of the show, we showed you these standings. Cincinnati 5-2. and two. A victory would get them into the playoffs, and it would give them a giant step towards the home field advantage. Seattle, three and four, must win. And they have battled back here. It is 14 to 10, the Bengals. Third down and six. Three wide receivers in there now. Anderson throwing complete at the 20 to Collinsworth. Harry Justin, the extra defensive back on the coverage, made the play. But that time, as has happened so often, important play. Anderson's the type of quarterback, too, Jay, that sees the whole field. And by that, I mean, you can take one receiver away from him or two receivers, but he'll see that and go to the one that's single coverage. And that time, he went to Collingsworth, who had man-to-man. -man. 40 seconds left in the third period. The only score of this quarter, the Seahawks. Five-yard pass, Zorn to Largent. Anderson throws complete. That is Mercer. Mercer to the 30-yard line. Keith Butler, the linebacker, 53, made the play. Mercer is exciting to watch. Great talent. This is the same route that he ran on the touchdown a little earlier. He didn't do much, just went down and stood there. He is the outlet. Same pattern, different coverage. Before it was a blitz, now it's a zone. Picks up seven yards, whereas before it was a big touchdown. Four wide receivers in the game for the Bengals. Two seconds, one second. That is the end of the third quarter. The score, the Bengals 14, the Seahawks 10. We'll be right back. Jay Randolph, you've seen him working on the leg there of Anthony Munoz, played at USC, the all-pro number one draft choice. He is out of the game. Is in there at the tackle spot for Munoz. Second down and three from the 30 yard line. Penalty marker down. Out it comes to Johnson. Johnson to the 32 yard line. It looked like the Seahawks were offside. One of the Seahawks is shaken up at the 29 yard line. And a timeout called as. Bruce Scott, Jim Witzel, Seahawks, Jim Witzel, the Seahawks training crew coming out. And Mike McCormick, coach, comes out. You don't see that very often. McCormick comes onto the field whenever one of his players is shaken up. He's ready. I uh, think Keith, Keith Simpson is the man who's down, and uh, he just got kicked in the head, but he went low to uh, tackle Johnson. Here's a look at the uh, play again. Man-to-man -man coverage, you'll see swing pass right out there. Throws his body block and his head right into the knees. Pete Johnson. Keith Simpson is the injured player. Seeing Mike McCormick out there, what a pleasant man, and a man who is really brought a lot of enthusiasm to this Seattle club over the last month or so. And, uh, you know, personalities and chemistry have so much to do with winning and getting things going. We'll talk a little bit about that, Bob, when we come back right after these messages. Today's game is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1, and USA 1 is taking charge. By Atari, the leader in home video games, for fun your whole family can share. And by Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, the Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. Here at Riverfront Stadium, the injured player is Keith Simpson for the Seahawks still attending to him. Take another look at this and see uh, see exactly what happens. He goes low into Pete Johnson. I think Johnson's knee just hits him right in the neck and the head area. Well, they're still attending to him here. If you're just joining us, 
It was a scoreless first quarter. The Bengals got two touchdowns in the second quarter. Johnson, a one-yard plunge at 13.09. Anderson, a 55-yarder to Verser at 2.13. And it was a field goal of 43 yards for Seattle's Norm Johnson that got them on the board. It was 14 to three at half. The Seahawks getting a five yarder from Zorn DeLargent here in the third, 14 to 10. You saw those statistics on the first three periods of play. Next week, the Bengals play Houston down in the Astrodome and the Seahawks will play the Denver Broncos in the Kingdom. That's the final weekend of the strike shortened season. And then the first eight teams will qualify for play in the Super Bowl tournament. And of course, there are a number of very interesting tie-breaking factors, things that will come into play to see who makes the playoffs. The Bengals with a win today can assure themselves of the playoffs. Seattle must win today to still have a shot. Keith Simpson being helped off. I think the key in that playoff system is if the uh, L.A. Raiders lose a ball game and the rest of the contenders win, we could have five teams tied at seven and two. And then that playoff system and the backup system of who goes where and uh, conference wins and uh, really come into, a into effect. Cleveland over Houston. They have most of the fourth quarter left to play. They've just gotten into the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh, 23 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Kavanaugh has taken over for Grogan. And Tampa Bay and Detroit are having a dandy. 21-20. Here it is 14 to 10, the Bengals. First and 10 from the 35 yard line. That's Charles Alexander. Alexander moving it out to the 38 yard line. Jacob Green, number 79, made the tackle. 14 minutes, 35 seconds remaining in regulation time. Seattle with a record of three and four. The Bengals with a record of five and two. Kerry Justin now is in for Keith Simpson at the left corner. See if uh, the Bengals test him. Justin, a free agent from Oregon State. Anderson. Out it goes, and Johnson makes a fine catch. pickup of 25 yards. That's the real value of Pete Johnson. Not only does he run well, he's a tough, short yardage runner, big, strong blocker, but when Anderson can't find anybody downfield, he's shifty enough to elude a tackler, a man as good as uh, Michael Jackson, and run with the ball in open field. It's a big asset in the backfield of the Bengals. Four wide receivers out there for the Bengals. First down at the 35. I think that's a good guess. It's interesting to note, though, Jay, that as soon as the as, as soon as the Seahawks got close, 14 to 10, the Bengals immediately went to their strength. That's their passing game. Four wide receivers holding. Number 77, offensive holding. Holding. Two guys holding. Yeah, he, he mentioned Obravic and also Wilson. Chris Collingsworth, he is not the primary receiver, just keeps going. Runs the same way as the quarterback. The quarterback is scrambling to the right. He runs in the same direction, makes a big play. Again, four wide receivers there. Now first and 20, back at the 46. That is Isaac Curtis at the 35. He was hit immediately by Keith Butler. In one chunk, Bob, but he got a good bit of it right there. Smart play by Anderson. 
First and 20, he's got three downs to pick up 20 yards. He goes after it immediately with the pass. Person comes coverage. out and Ross comes back in. Collinsworth going to the left side. Kreider to the right. Pete Johnson, the single setback. Second and nine. interference. McCormick doesn't like it. Jackie Simpson doesn't like it. That's the defensive assistant. Simpson is really hot. I don't think I like it either. I didn't see anything. The discussion now with referee Bob Frederick and the men on the play. The flags were thrown. He may pick up that uh, flag. Uh, just just an out pattern by the wide receiver. Can't really see from that angle. Well, it's gonna be pass interference called against John Harris. Anthony Munoz, bothered by an ankle injury, is back into the game. There is Harris. And it is a first down at the 15-yard line for the Bengals. flag is on the green turf here. Dave Brown, Kenny Easley, 22 and 45, made the tackle. Boy, I'll tell you, they're clawing at one another down there right now. Grabbing, holding, whatever. Back to the 25. Let's listen in. Offensive holding, number 78 against Munoz, who just came back into the game, bothered, of course, as we said, by the ankle. We saw that being taped up. You know, Jay, it's hard for me to understand how the Seahawks can play the Bengals when they have three and four wide receivers in the game without going to five or six de uh, defensive backs. They're having linebackers cover wide receivers, and that's a mismatch. First and 20. Anderson throwing and incomplete. David Burser seven-yard line, couldn't hold on. Ken Easley over there on the coverage. Bursar got the big touchdown pass, his first touchdown of the year. Earlier on, Ross now comes back in at tight end, number 89. Bursar comes out. Pittsburgh leading 30-14 to 14 now up at Three Rivers Stadium. Terry Bradshaw just thrown a 54-yard touchdown pass to Craig Hawthorne. Frisco leading Kansas City. Second and 20 here. Ken Anderson with a lot of time. And it is complete. And that is Kreider at the 13-yard line. Kenny Easley there to make the tackle on Kreider. Kreider who played at Lehigh. Three wide receivers again to, to uh, the quarterback's left. He looks to the right, comes back. All the receivers are being jammed at the line of scrimmage. Kreider keeps his poise, shakes free, not very much. It's open just enough, slips on the turf. Third and nine. Third and nine at the 14 with 11.40 to play in this game. The Bengals leading 14 to 10. Collinsworth. 
we said before, there's a lot of jamming by the Seattle Seahawks at the line of scrimmage. He must have been pushing off to get free. A lot of times the wide receiver will become frustrated. Here we see Collinsworth. See if he pushes off. He's being jammed. He's being jammed. That's offensive pass interference. You got something on me. That was the call, and it nullified the touchdown. Third and 19, now at the 24. Again, the four wide receivers. Anderson on the run, throws back into the middle. That's Collinsworth getting to the 16-yard line. And it's going to be field goal time for the Bengals. That's the thing that's so dangerous about Cincinnati and Kenny Anderson is that he can run, and when he scrambles around, he is more dangerous than ever. Here we see Collinsworth coming around, looking for an open spot, comes back underneath the linebacker, says, I'm open, get me the ball. Not enough for the first down. Have to go for the field goal. The ball will be spotted at the 24-yard line. 34-yard attempt by Jim Breach. He's 13 of 16 this year. Mike Fuller will do the holding. The kick is good. Oh, and Breach is saying to himself, thank goodness, that was close. Barely good. Ten and a half to play here. Angle 17, Seahawks 10. Jim Breach on this field goal. I think he thought he'd missed it, Bob. Look at him here. He's, he's trying to look like he's trying to get it to break. He says, thank goodness it went through. All right, it's a seven-point lead for the Bengals. Breach, second leading kicker in the league. Ten straight field goals now he has made. And Johns and Eric Lane are back to receive. At the 15, at the 20, the 25, out to the 30, focal. Cincinnati gets it at the 32. Mike Fuller picked up on waivers from San Diego. It's a good, tough hit. Fuller is in the right position at the right time. You just can't give the ball up. Last week, Seattle gave it over six times. Today, they've given it over three times. They've been penalized 11 times for 107 yards. You cannot win football games by not executing and turning the football over. First and 10 for Cincinnati. The Seattle defense has been on the field a long time here. Ball down by number 77, Jeff Bryant. Pass appeared to be intended for Pete Johnson. Clock is stopped with 10 minutes, 15 seconds remaining to be played. This is the second best pass defense that you can find. The first, of course, is putting him on his back. He can't throw from being on his back and being sacked. down and 10. Out it comes to Johnson. He's at the 30. Spins away. Gets down to the 27-yard line. Big Pete Johnson doing the job under pressure. The Bengals leading 17 to 10. Tackle was made by Jeff Bryant, number 77. Clock running with 9 minutes and 50 seconds. Left to go. There's a man who coughed up the ball. The talented returner, Pete Johns. Anderson now is 21 out of 28. 252 yards. Third and five. The tight end made a fine catch. Goes back 
like he's got man-to-man -man coverage. The ball has to be thrown good because he's close. Good play by Dan Ross, getting open. Opportunity to look at the protection all kinds of time. That's the kind of protection you like. Nobody in your face, plenty of time to throw. First, First down at the 14-yard line. Johnson. Got a couple. Michael Jackson, number 55, led the way for Seattle. These two clubs have really played full tilt. Archie Griffin coming in now, Johnson coming out. 45 in, 46 out. Clock running with eight minutes and 45 seconds remaining. That's for Archie, maybe catching a pass coming out of the backfield. Bob Greasy to Archie Griffin. The ball was batted around. Michael Jackson is frustrated there as he almost came up with it. He's upset. You can't blame him. Now a penalty marker is thrown. Michael Jackson, a very emotional player, has his highs and his lows. Listen to Bob Frederick on this penalty. Defensive holding, number 58. First down. The call going against Bruce Scholes, but look again at the isolation here on Griffin. There you see Michael Jackson cutting right in front of him. He wanted to go to him. He tipped the ball in the air. I can't believe the opportunities to make the plays that the Seahawks have had and have not have made them. Second down, goal to go, just outside of the two-yard line. Eight minutes to play. Bengals leading 17-10. Johnson. Touchdown! him a little bit of a seam. He runs over a defensive tackle, pushes a couple of linebackers into the end zone. The mark of a very good football team, a team that was in the Super Bowl a year ago. They took advantage of a break in a very close game and now have a 23 to 10 lead. Breach will try to make it 24 to 10. Good point. minutes 46 seconds remaining here at riverfront in cincinnati the Bengals 46 to play the Bengals 33 yards in five plays after the turnover breach will kick off johns and lane set to receive a low swift kick and it is johns at the 15 the 20 the 25 out to the 27-yard line. Paul Johns on the return, the tackle. Robert Jackson, number 37, on the specialty unit. The Bengals up 24 to 10. The Seahawks with the football. Take a look at some scores very quickly for you. Houston now has taken the lead over Cleveland. They have about eight minutes to play in the fourth quarter. St. Louis. We'll show you that score in a moment. Pittsburgh having a big day. And uh, Bob Greasy, after we run this play, I want to talk a moment about the Steelers. Here's a pass down the sideline. Complete. Roger Carr is all the way to the 32-yard line. Carr making a fine catch. Mike Fuller had the coverage, but it is.
is a first down and a big play for Seattle as they try to get back in at 40 yard pass play. You see Ken Riley letting him go. That's a double zone. Riley's got the short area. He's looking for help from the weak safety. Fuller it was a good play by Jim Zorn, the quarterback. He looked off Fuller, the weak safety, looked him off, threw the ball down the sidelines, and that's why Fuller wasn't over where his responsibility was. Margent goes wide to the right. Paul Johns now set left. First and 10 at the 33. Zorn going long downfield and incomplete. He was going for Largent, had to throw outside. Ray Griffin had the coverage. Bob, back to what we were talking about a moment ago. Pittsburgh having a very big day, 37 to 14. Terry Bradshaw has thrown for more than 250 yards and a couple of touchdown passes. Bradshaw's had a couple of very tough weeks. You talked to him yesterday, and uh, he seemed to feel that they'd righted themselves at Pittsburgh. Well, he feels like he had a good week's practice. He's been through this a couple of times before, and, and uh, we just talked about the things that I've been through before. I've had some bad weeks. He was very confident going in the game. He says, I'm either going to perform in the first quarter or I'm going to be on the bench. I had confidence in him. I knew he'd come back and play well today. He's a good quarterback. Second and 10 at the 33. They swing it out. And up the sideline goes David Hughes. Hughes is a good receiver. They like to use him. Mo Harris, 53, made the play. Some other scores. Detroit leading Tampa Bay 21 to 20. They're in the fourth quarter. Very big game there. And Green Bay is really putting it on Atlanta in the fourth quarter down in Atlanta. The pack has come back today in fine fashion. San Francisco leading by three at Kansas City against the Chiefs. And St. Louis, we mentioned. St. Louis with a win today has an excellent shot for the playoffs. Jim Hannafin's crew has done quite a job. Almost intercepted. The pass intended for Tice, the tight end, slipped away, and Bobby Kemp almost came up with it. Ball should have been intercepted. Kemp is feeling uh, upset with himself. A lot of times people say, how can you not miss a ball when it's tipped up in the air like that? But Kemp is more concerned about covering the man than he is catching the ball, and it surprises him. This is the last thing you want to do is drop it when he could have ended the ball game for the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Ball will be spotted at the 33-yard line. 43-yarder for Norm Johnson, a fake. And they run it through, and it's a first down. Well, you often will see that from Seattle. And you saw Zorn run the football out of a field goal formation. I don't think it surprised uh, too many people in the stadium. You've got six minutes left. There are two touchdowns behind. It's fourth and three, and they're lining up for a field goal. They've been very successful as Seattle in the past and running gimmick plays like that. They may have felt like that was the best way to get up to three yards. I'm frankly surprised Cincinnati didn't smell it out there. I am too. First and 10 at the 17. Seahawks still alive, trying to come back again. on the coverage for the Bengals. That man has got to be uh, getting some gray hairs from uh, everything that's going on this game. When things are going bad for you, nothing seems to, to click. If he would have just had a little bit more height on that ball, he had to get rid of it. Again, it was a blitz, and he didn't have everybody blocked. If he'd had a little bit more air under it, as we say, he could have had a little bit more time to catch it. Second and ten. Roger Carr and Largent are both set to the right side. Johns is over on the left, and nothing there. Giving the ball up the middle to Dornick. Rather interesting call, Bob. Mike St. Clair smelled it out, number 72, to make the play. It's one of those plays, Jay, that if it works, it's a good call, and if it doesn't, you wonder why you ran it. They were spread out in a passing formation. The defense was waiting for a pass, and you tried to sneak him through, but that time it didn't work. Incomplete. Pass was thrown 
for Largent. It was thrown just behind him. Largent made an excellent move and almost held on. Griffin and Kemp on the coverage, an isolated view. Well, you had double coverage. Griffin on the outside, Kemp on the inside. He hooks between both receivers. The ball is thrown behind him. If the ball would have been thrown inside where he was turning, it would have been a completion and a first down. Now it is fourth and 13. 439 to play. The Seahawks will go for it. This is their season right here if they're going to stay alive. Exactly right. much time left. And well, we've got four minutes left, Jay, and a lot of things can happen. The, you're going against a veteran offensive team. The Seattle defense is going to have to come up with some fumbles or interceptions, but uh, it's been done before. We've done it. All right, right now the Bengals have the football. They'll try to turn some time up off the clock. That is Pete Johnson breaking out. Oh, he almost broke it big, but he has a first down at the 19-yard line. The Bengals lead at 24 to 10. And a look again at the big guy. Oh, do we have a penalty marker down? There's a face mask right there as he's getting through the line. I think this is what you're going to see the next uh, few plays is uh, the big fullback coming right up the middle at you. Well, apparently we did not get a call for the face mask. I thought there was a marker down, but apparently not. We remind you this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Bengals and the NFL is prohibited. Bob, if the Bengals win it, they play at Houston. They've got an excellent chance for the home field advantage, certainly for the first weekend and maybe for more. If they win the next two games, they're seven and two, they will have their first game at home at least. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. Well, he might have got a yard. Here's the final. The Steelers, 37 to 14 over New England. Brogan was injured in that game. Kavanaugh took over, tried to rally them, but the Steelers win it, and they're in excellent shape for the playoffs. Going to be second down and nine from the 21. I believe the Steelers are at home next week also. with him. Mike White, number 
number 70 made the tackle. We have two minutes and 42 seconds remaining to be played. The Seahawks now with two timeouts left. The Bengals with three. Pete Johnson today, two touchdowns. That gives Johnson a total of six on the season. He has rushed the ball for 61 yards on 14 carries, and he's caught five very big passes for 46 yards. He's a big part of this team. Uh, they send in four wide receivers. The most dangerous may be him coming out of the backfield when the other ones are covered downfield. They'll dump it off to Pete Johnson. The Fiesta Bowl pits the Sooners of Oklahoma and the talented group from Arizona State playing right there in their own backyard in Tempe. All comes your way at 1.30 Eastern time to kick off New Year's Day Bowl action on NBC. And, of course, that action will be followed by the Rose Bowl, Michigan against UCLA. And then in the evening, sit back and enjoy the Cornhuskers and the Fighting Tigers of LSU amidst all of the pageantry of the Orange Bowl game. Double tight end alignment. Harris and Ross are both in there. Third down and two at the 28. Johnson, a big first down. He's got it over the 30-yard line. Joe Nash made the play. We'll pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching KING-TV, Channel 5, Seattle. First and 10 for the Bengals. They're operating from their own 31-yard line. Two minutes, 10 seconds remaining to be played. Crowd of over 50,000 here at Riverfront today. And they've gotten the Christmas gift a day late. They've... Uh, to playoff spot. All right, the two minute warning. Now, here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. 24 to 10, the Bengals. The Bengals and the Seahawks have put on an excellent show here today. The Bengals up by 14, facing first and 10 from their own 31 yard line. to Alexander, and he loses a couple. Coming up to make the play for the Seahawks, Mark Bell, number 82, who's in the lineup. And timeout for Seattle. That leaves them one timeout remaining. Well, Mike McCormick has got to be proud of the effort he's been able to get from this club over the last month, Bob. They have played with a tremendous amount of enthusiasm. As you mentioned last week and again this week, the turnovers, the penalties have hurt a very talented but a very young team. They're a very good defensive ball club. Their strength in the past has been in their offense. They're having some problems. Mike McCormick came in, took over for Jack Patera. A lot of the players said that Patera's rules and regulations were too much, too tough, too strict. Didn't let them perform. Didn't let them play the way they wanted to play. Mike. Mike has come in and done a good job, changed it a little bit. The players are feeling a little bit more free to do the things they want to do. Tonight on NBC, Voyagers, Chips, and Battle Beyond the Stars. All tonight on NBC, we invite you to join us for an evening of exciting entertainment. Second down and 13 from the 28-yard line. Johnson is the single setback. He gets it and is stopped. No game. It'll be third down and 13 coming up. Keith Butler came across to make the play. You know, Mike McCormick, who we're talking about a little bit, says that uh, he's just the interim coach, that he's not interested in coaching. He wants to go back to the front office next year. Whoever takes over uh, and is the coach of this ball club is going to have a good nucleus for a good football team next year. Well, don't rule out the fact that he might not be coaching because if you talk to a number of the men on this team, I think if you were to take a vote of the Seahawks players, that they would want McCormick to come back. And whether Mike would admit it or not, he loves coaching. He had a very 
tough experience at Baltimore and not a much better experience at Philadelphia. But he likes the atmosphere in Seattle. He likes the organization in Seattle. And he obviously has liked what has happened, as I mentioned again, with the chemistry in this team over the past five or six weeks. You talk about Jack Matera and Mike McCormick. You really have two, two coaches with really varying philosophies. Matera very strict. McCormick more of a loose uh, organization. We'll let the players do some things. You can get it done both ways. Yes, indeed. Third and 13. The handoff again is to Johnson. And he gets to the 30-yard line, holding on. The Seahawks are going to get the football, but they are without any timeouts. Nash made the tackle. Seahawks were hampered today with the injury to Hardy and the injury to Tuiasa Sopo, uh, who aggravated that uh, knee injury of his early on. But uh, you really can't fault the defense for the way they played the past few weeks. I think the problem is they've missed some opportunities, uh, dropped an interception that would have helped them. They've had some penalties that have really hurt them offensively. And the turnovers, or ten or turnovers last week and again this week, you have to be consistent to move the ball offensively, and they have not done that. Pat McAnally will do the punting. Paul Johns is downfield. Big rush. McAnally got it away. Johns lets it hit, and he lets it roll. He didn't have much of a chance to come up and get that kick, and it will be Seattle's football, and they'll take it from their own 22-yard line. A 48-yard punt. Here are the standings, the way they'll look tomorrow as far as Cincinnati goes. They are 6-2. and two. And Seattle will mock down there at three and five and the out of the picture. New England drops to four and four. They play Buffalo next week. That'd be a must game for them. I think five and four will get them in the playoffs. First and ten from the 23 yard line for Seattle. Thorn throwing and it is complete up the sideline. David Hughes steps out of bounds with 31 seconds remaining. Ray Griffin on the coverage. Thanks to Bill Schwarberg and Mike Leonard, John Murdaugh, and all our crew here. Hope you've enjoyed the sights and sounds of the NFL this afternoon from Riverfront. Coordinating producer of NFL football for NBC, Ted Nathanson, has been here providing the pictures for us this afternoon. Gentlemen, I've had the pleasure of working with now for 16 years. Three seconds left. John Simmons running him out of bounds. The coordinating producer of our NBC football is Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game was ably produced by Terry Ewart, directed by Ted Nathanson, the associate director, John Libretto. Thanks to our entire crew from WLWT here in Cincinnati and to everyone here in the booth for their help and support this afternoon. 23 seconds remaining. Bengals lead at 24 to 10. Zorn throwing and complete to Largent down to the 45 yard line of Cincinnati. Largent hit down there by Mike Fuller, a 22 yard pickup. Seven seconds, six seconds. First down at the 45. Zorn throws it out of bounds. It is over.